In this final video for Math 1050, our lecture series here, I wanted to demonstrate how you can simplify a difference quotient that involves a radical, uh, particularly a square root. These can get a little bit tricky, but so let's, let's work through it here. If we start off with the average area change, we get delta y over delta x. Uh, what we see here is that we're going to take f of x plus h. Think of this as our function with a blank in it, right? g of blank. What does that mean? It means you're going to take the square root of blank squared plus a 9. Okay? So that blank will sometimes be an x, sometimes we'll be an x plus h. So we're going to get this, we're going to get uh, x plus h squared plus a 9. That all sits inside of a square root. And then we subtract from that a square root of x squared plus 9. This all sits above uh, an h. Like so. So how do you combine like terms on the top when you, have a, when you have these difference of square roots and such? Well, as I've often mentioned in this lecture series, college algebra or pre-cal, because whatever the name of your class is called, is often like the Karate Kid, right? Where Mr. Miyagi's teaching Daniels on all of these techniques. Um, and so it's only until like the end that we actually discover like, oh, I was learning karate the whole time. So all these techniques we've learned in college algebra, intermediate algebra, elementary algebra, all of them come into play at some point. And so this one, it turns out, we want to rationalize the numerator. That is, I want to multiply by the conjugate. So you have this square root minus a square root. Switch the sign of the square root. I'm going to take the square root of x plus h squared plus 9. I'm going to add to it. Let me scooch over a little bit. I'm going to add to it the square root of x squared plus 9. Right. So it's the exact same difference of square roots, but we've changed it to a sum. And you have to do the same thing to the, to the denominator as well. So you get the square root of x plus h squared plus 9 plus the square root of x squared plus 9. That's what you want there. So then in the denominator, you're going to leave things factored. You never multiply out a denominator. It's not worth it. Don't do it. So the denominator is going to look like h times this big honking thing. So the square root of x plus h squared plus 9 plus the square root of x squared plus 9. You see that. Now in the numerator, I do want you to FOIL things out. So when we talk about FOIL, we have first, notice I'm going to take the square root of x plus h squared plus 9 times by itself. When you square a square root, the square root just disappears, and you're left with x plus h squared plus 9. So that's the first thing. This is our first with our FOIL. Next, you're going to multiply together the outside terms. When you multiply the outside terms, you get this one times that one, okay, uh, which I'm not going to write that down because of the following reason. When you do the inside terms, you take this one times that one, you notice that the inside term and the outside term are actually identical to each other, except they differ by a sign. You have the square root of x plus h squared plus 9 times the square root of x squared plus 9. So basically, the first one gives you the square root of a times the square root of b, the second one's going to give you the negative square root of a times the square root of b. So you'll see that the outside and inside terms cancel each other out. That's why we multiply the conjugate. That's why we switched the sign. That's why we went from negative to positive, because I knew when I foiled, these things would cancel out. And so then the last thing to do is the last terms, right? You take this one times that one. You get the square root of x squared plus 9 times the square root of x squared plus 9. But you're just squaring a square root that ends up with giving you a minus x squared plus 9. So we rationalized the numerator. All the, all the square roots in the numerator disappeared. So we can actually simplify thing, that thing a lot nicely. It's going to be very nice, right? Take the x plus 4 squared, foil that out. Uh, we're going to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 9. We then subtract from that the x squared plus 9 and then copy down the denominator, h times the square root of x plus h squared plus 9 plus the square root of x squared plus 9. The denominator is just, on, just going for a ride right now. So in the numerator, cancel like terms. x squares cancel. The 9 cancels, like so. In which case then, the numerator would simplify to be 2xh plus h squared over h times that square root again, which I must write it down one more time. This is the hardest part about these difference quotients, carrying around your luggage. The denominator, why do you have to be so complicated? All right, so the numerator now, though, you'll notice everything, if you did everything right, everything should cancel out except for, well, everything that, 
After everything's canceled out, every one of the numerator is divisible by h. So factor out the h because we need to cancel it out. You get h times 2x plus h, and then this is above h, and then you get those square roots again. Carry that heavy luggage up the scare stairs. I wish I had an escalator right now. All right. Uh, I guess I already did that. Let's extend this line so that we see that there. And now the H cancels on the top and bottom, for which then we're now ready to specify the simplified, uh, the simplified average rate of change, delta Y over delta X. This is then equal to, write out that denominator, make it a big, big, big line right there. You're going to get 2X plus H, and then this sits above the square root of X plus H squared plus 9 plus the square root of x squared plus 9, like so. This gives us our average rate of change. But then if we want the instantaneous rate of change, right, we set at h equal to 0. This is going to give us a 2x plus 0 above the square root of x plus 0 squared plus 9 plus the square root of x squared plus 9. You notice the numerator simplifies just to be a 2x. But the denominator, you're going to get the square root of x squared plus 9 twice. So you actually get two times the square root of x squared plus 9, for which the 2s actually cancel out. And this thing simplifies kind of nicely, right? In the end, we end up with x over the square root of x squared plus 9, like so. And that then gives us this derivative, this so-called instantaneous rate of change. And that then brings us to the end of our lecture series. Um, you can take out, you can look at some of the review videos we have for our final exam coming up uh, as you try to prepare for that. That's a big deal. You want to do well on that. Good, uh, good at you for getting this far in our series here. Um, and then again, I want to congratulate you for making it to the end of the series. If you feel like during these these many, many videos, if you learned something about college algebra, uh, you know, show that by hitting the like button. Uh, feel free always to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Uh, many of you watching this video, I know, will be going on into a calculus class in the not too distant future at Southern Utah, at Southern Utah University. That's probably either uh, Math 1210, which is called Calculus 1, or it could be Math 1100, which is a business calculus class, or there's also an economics class that uses a lot of, uh, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of economics uh, excuse me, a lot of calculus and economics. Some of them might be going in those directions. Uh, and so in the future, if you do need some help on calculus, feel free to check in with these videos in the future. I do have also a Calculus One lecture series that you could take a look at. Those videos are available on YouTube. Uh, you can see the link for that right now. You can also, again, in the future, if you continue on, depends how far you want to go, but I also have a lecture series for, uh, of course, calculus 2, linear algebra, and a lot of other math classes. So feel free to subscribe if you want to learn more about uh, other math topics in the future if you're going to continue in your math education. Um, and always, if there's questions, feel free to post them in the comments. And hopefully I'll see you all sometime in the future. Uh, thank you. Thank you for participating in this series and best of luck in your future mathematical endeavors.